Hello, this is the lecture that you should watch before you take the Google Earth Lab exercise. I'm going to go over Google Earth and some of its functionality and give you a heads up on the exercise and hopefully you'll learn something from my lecture. Now the first thing that you'll need to do this exercise is you will need to have Google Earth. Now on my computer I have Google Earth loaded but I'm going to show you where you go to download it. There's also a link on geoworkshops.org that gives you a direct link to where it's located. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the window. Very easy to find. If you go to Google search, you can just type in Google Earth download and you should come to this page. Now, I feel it's very important that you have the latest version of Google Earth. I'm going to be uh, using Google Earth 6.2 beta for the purposes of my lecture. Now, when you go to the download site, you do have a choice. Um, Google makes other products such as Google Chrome. And you'll notice that they automatically check for you to download Google Chrome. And they also allow you to make Google Chrome your default browser. Now I'm going to uncheck both of those. If you scroll down, you'll notice that there are some uh, Google Maps Earth Terms of Service. Google has recently changed some of their privacy policies. I encourage you to read those. And I want you to notice that there is a button for advanced setup. I'm going to go ahead and click that and show you what's there. You do have an option to download the latest version, or if for some reason you want to download the previous version, you can do that. You can also allow Google Earth to automatically install recommended updates, which I think is a pretty decent thing to do. And for some of you that don't have administrative rights on your computers, uh, if you have your IT professional install Google Earth, make sure that they have Google Earth available to all the users of your profile. I'm going to go ahead and click Agree and Download. Now, I'm not actually going to download the file since it's already installed, so I'm going to hit Cancel. On this page, I do want to point out that there are a number of beginner and advanced videos that you can use to increase your skills in Google Earth. I believe that my lecture and our exercise will get you on the road to understanding Google Earth, but there's always room to learn more. If you want to, you can explore more of the 3D options in Google Earth. There's a link to that. But specifically what I want to point out is the very bottom link, the unofficial Google Earth blog, and I'm going to go ahead and open this website. Now the first blog entry here is uh, something about the Costa Concordia, the cruise ship that recently wrecked off the coast of Italy. I'm going to scroll down though and show you something else. There's a little bit of a blog about Google Earth 6.2 release, and notice that uh, it works in conjunction with Google Plus. Now myself, I'm just starting to explore Google Plus, but Google, since they make multiple products, is really trying to enable you to do what you do on Google Earth and share it on Google Plus. One of the really neat things about Google Earth that's new is what's called Pretty Earth. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit further and you'll see the example of what I'm talking about. For those of you that have used Google Earth before, you will recall that sometimes the aerial images were a little bit splotchy. What Google has done has made those look a lot prettier and a lot more seamless, which I think is a big improvement. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, and we'll go ahead and start exploring Google Earth. Now, Google Earth on my computer is a desktop icon, but if you go to the Start menu and go to All Programs, scroll down until you see Google Earth, Notice that there are a couple different types of Google Earth. You have regular Google Earth, DirectX mode, and OpenGL mode. You really want to open the regular Google Earth. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Google Earth launches with lightning speed. And we zoom in on America. I'm going to start off by exploring some of the pull-down menus in Google Earth. So coming up to the top bar here, I'm going to click on the File menu first. Pretty basic stuff. You have file open, file save. Notice there's an email option. So if you want to, whatever you're looking at at Google Earth, you could select email view. And then using your standard email browsers, you can email this view to people that you know. Kind of a neat functionality. I haven't actually used it myself, but it is a new feature. Other things in the file, uh, you can print what you see in Google Earth, which is kind of cool if you want to print out a copy and give to someone. Scrolling over to the Edit pull-down menu, you do have the ability to copy image. I'm going to go ahead and select Copy Image. Then I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. 
And what you can do is what you see in Google Earth, if you copy image, when you open up Microsoft Word, you can simply right click and you can paste the view. So it's really easy to add geographic images to any kind of Word document, or for example, you could put this into a PowerPoint slide. I'm going to go ahead and close this right now. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the view menu. Now the view menu has a couple different options that I'm going to show you. Uh, one of them that I think is pretty cool is that you can turn on a grid over the planet. So if you scroll down, you see the option for grid. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it places a grid, latitude and longitude across the planet. If you zoom in, the grid changes to provide you with more um, detailed grid information. You also have the option to turn on an overview map. And what this does in the lower right hand corner of your screen, it places a map. So when you're zoomed in, you can tell where you are on the planet. There's a um, little button for historical imagery, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. And for now, I'm going to turn off the grid. Under the tools pull down menu, you do have a ruler. So I can go ahead and turn the ruler on. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and create a line on the map. Let's say, for existence, I wanted to see the distance from San Francisco to DC. Now I know San Francisco is about here, and I know that DC is about here. So by clicking this, I can see that it's about 2,451 miles from San Francisco to DC. Kind of handy if you want to make some quick uh, measurements in Google Earth. You go ahead and close this. Back to the tools pull down menu. The next uh, thing I want to show you is the GPS uh, dialog. Now, if you have, for example, a handheld, perhaps a Garmin or a Magellan GPS unit, you can connect that GPS unit to your computer and you can import directly into Google Earth the coordinates or waypoints that you collect on your handheld GPS. Now, within the geoworkshops.org, under our special topics pull down menu, we actually have some training material that goes over step by step how to import GPS data from your Garmin into Google Earth. So I'm not really going to explain that right now. The next thing on the tools pull down menu, we do have the Enter Flight Simulator. And that's what I'm going to end this lecture on. So we're going to come back to that a little bit later. The next option is actually called Options. And if we open that up, there's a number of tabs that you can use to basically control some of the settings of Google Earth. We're going to be looking at the 3D view um, tab. And then later on, when we talk about Google Earth Tours, we'll be exploring the Touring tab. I'm not going to go over every single one of these option menus right now, because quite frankly, there are a lot of options. And if I did go over every single one, you'd be listening to me for the next couple hours. The next pull down menu is the Add. And if I click Add, you'll see a number of options like add a place mark, pass, polygons, photos, things like that. Many of these options here are also available as buttons. For example, the add place mark is a button here called place mark. Underneath help, there are some help resources online. You can check for your updates online and you can learn about what version that you have. I'm going to go ahead and click the about Google Earth. And this tells me that I'm running version 6.2 beta. You should do this on your Google Earth. You may have a much older version of Google Earth, in which case some of the things I'm going to show you, you won't be able to do on your version of Google Earth. These buttons that go across the top, I mentioned the Add Placemark button, but we can add polygons, we can add paths, we can add an image overlay, all kinds of things that we can do. The Show Historical Imagery button, I will be explaining to you later. You have the option to print and some other useful things. For example, I could view the same scene in Google Maps. So if I hit this button, I will leave Google Earth and I will go to Google Maps. So just a way you can bounce between the two Google sort of uh, geography applications. Up for right now, I'm going to go back to Google Earth. Now, before I leave the explaining the menus, I did want to show you uh, something I skipped over um, under the view option. If you select View, there is an option to explore. And you can do things like, for example, you could explore Mars. So if I switch from Earth to Mars, I will load the Mars planet. 
And then I can use all of these tools and search Mars. Maybe someday, if you're young enough, you'll get a chance to go there. You can also explore the sky and you can explore the moon. And I'll leave that up to you to check out some of these other options. But for right now, we're going to get grounded back on Earth. Now I want to start explaining some of the dialog boxes that are on the left hand side of Google Earth. The first one is the search dialog box. So if we're going to search for something, we might as well search for something that's pretty interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Machu Picchu, which is the ancient lost city of the Incas. So I simply go there, put my mouse and click, and type in Machu Picchu. It helps if you know how to spell that. And then I click the search tab. So Google Earth found Machu Picchu and is flying us there quite rapidly. So as we approach Machu Picchu, you can see that the imagery sharpens and gets a little bit uh, better resolution. And then we can see Machu Picchu. This is a good point for me to explain some of the navigation tools. The default tool that you can use with your mouse, if you use the left clicker, is the pan tool. So if I simply click down with my left mouse button, I can move the scene around and we can see what's around. Now you may notice uh, that it looks like there's some 3D terrain. If I really want to rotate in 3D, what I can do is, provided um, that you have a three button mouse, if you press down on the middle button of your mouse, then you can use the rotate tool. So I can spin this around and actually see that Google Earth provides a 3D terrain. And it really helps me understand the location of Machu Picchu in relationship to the rest of the terrain. If you look where it's at, it's no wonder it was lost for many, many years. You can see the path that tourists take to get up there. Now, in the right-hand side of the screen, there are a number of other navigational tools. And if you notice, they're kind of grayed out until I put my mouse near them, and then they highlight. The simplest ones to use are the zoom in, zoom out. So if I hit the plus sign, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to pan a little bit. If I hit the minus sign, I'm going to move out. And I can also take the slider bar and go up, and I can go down. The rotate bar, we see the little N for the north, north arrow. If I grab that, I can rotate around Machu Picchu. If I select the um, arrows here, I can tilt up, I can tilt down, I can tilt to one side or tilt to the other side. If I just want to go straight forward like I'm flying, I can use these buttons here. So now I'm flying in reverse, or I could fly sideways. I'm going to go ahead and slide back until I can see Machu Picchu. Now, as I zoom in, recenter on here, you'll notice that Machu Picchu, you can see the ruins, but it really doesn't look that realistic. The digital terrain model that Google Earth uses is not very precise in all areas of the planet. So this actually looks a little bit funky. I'm going to show you something um, in the Layers tab dialog. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my screen so you can see it better. Google Earth has something called 3D Buildings. And I'm going to go ahead and check 3D Buildings, and let's see if anyone's put a model of Machu Picchu here. They have. So now I can see a more realistic rendition of Machu Picchu. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here to get the full effect. So now we can see the whole city. Notice there's some runes uh, up here on the peak. And notice if I put my mouse over the 3D object, it highlights in blue. If I left click on that, it will pop up the information about Machu Picchu. So here you can see basically the place. There's a YouTube video you can watch. And there's actually some pictures uh, of the area that we can look at as well. If I click on the model, I want to figure out who made this model. It pops up a dialogue that describes who did it. If I click the More button, it expands, and I can see that this model was done by the University of Arkansas, the Center for Advanced Spatial Technologies, uh, which, if you look at this, it looks pretty darn advanced. You can do this for any model that's created in 3D and find out who made it and if there's any information, although I will tell you that not everyone puts the level of detailed information that we have here for Machu Picchu. Now, the next thing that you might want to do is add a placemark. 
So if I come up to the place mark button and I click add place mark, I can put a place mark on Machu Picchu. This enables me to save it, and if I want to come back to it without having to type Machu Picchu, uh, it's really easy to do. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill out some of this dialogue information. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the name Machu Picchu, and I'm going to give it a little bit of description. I'm going to call it the Lost City of the Incas. Then I simply click OK. Now, if I move around, I can come back to it at ease. So I'm going to expand this a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and move kind of far away. I'm totally lost somewhere in the Andes. Who knows, if we look carefully enough, maybe we will notice another lost city in the mountains. But if I want to go back to Machu Picchu, I simply take my mouse over to the Places dialog, and I go ahead and double click. And this will take me back to Machu Picchu. So it's a nice way to save landmarks or places of interest that you're going to go back to frequently. I'm going to go ahead and close this dialog right now. And I want to show you what Machu Picchu might look like without the 3D terrain. Now, first, I'm going to go ahead and turn off these 3D buildings. Now, to turn terrain off, you have to go to the Tools option menu. So I'm going to go ahead and select Tools, then select Options. Now, it has something to do with terrain and 3D, so logically it's under the 3D View tab. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And if I scroll down this long list of many different things I can do, you will see that there's a Show Terrain checkbox. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that and click OK. So now I can see Machu Picchu minus the terrain. Looks very flat. Really doesn't represent what's going on there at all. I'm going to go ahead and turn the terrain back on. However, there are times that you may not wish to have terrain, so it's important you know how to turn terrain on and off. Go ahead and turn terrain back on and click OK. Now, let's say you wanted to share the location of Machu Picchu with one of your friends. If you went over to the Places dialog and you right-clicked on Machu Picchu, you would notice that there's an option to email. So I could click this email, and then I could actually send this file via email to someone. Another way you could do it is you could save it as what's known as a KMZ file. This is the native file format for Google Earth. Now, there's also KML, but most of the time when you save it, you save the zip version of a KML, which is a KMZ. It stands for Keystone Markup Language, and then the KMZ stands for Keystone Markup Zip. So to save it as a KMZ file, and in fact, this is something you're going to have to do for the assignment, is we're going to have you tell us what your favorite place is, and then you're going to save it as a KMZ file, and then you will upload that KMZ file to complete your assignment. So I go back to Machu Picchu in the Places dialog, right-click, and select Save Place As. So I click Save Place As. I go ahead, and I'm going to save it on my desktop. Notice that it picks up the file name that you named the place mark. So it's Machu Picchu.KMZ. I go ahead and click Save. I'm going to go ahead and close Google Earth, but I'm going to delete Machu Picchu from my map. So I delete Machu Picchu. I go ahead and close Google Earth. And you'll notice on my desktop, I have a KMZ file for Machu Picchu. So I simply, I could email to someone. I can save it. I put it on a jump drive. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this, and it will open Google Earth and it will automatically zoom to Machu Picchu. So you can see it over here in the places, it shows up, and we're flying right in to Machu Picchu. This is how you're gonna show us your favorite place to go on the planet. Next, we're gonna explore some of the different layers that are available in Google Earth. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this Machu Picchu KMZ for now. And I'm gonna to go to a place that's a little bit for, more familiar to me, which would be Maryland. So I'm going to type in Maryland and hit search. Off we go back to the United States of America. 
Now, showing terrain in Maryland uh, really isn't too important unless you're in the western part of Maryland because Maryland is very flat. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit on Maryland. And then I'm going to go down to the layers. I'm going to expand this so you can see what the different options are. Now, the first option you'll see under primary database is borders and labels. I'm going to go ahead and check borders and labels. And what you'll notice is a variety of different lines are showing up. Now, what do all these lines mean? Well, some of them are pretty obvious. For example, the city of Baltimore, Frederick, or Hagerstown. So the larger cities will show up as dots. Now, the home of Washington College, Chestertown, which is right over here, doesn't show up at this scale because it's not quite as big as Baltimore. Notice over in the Layers section that there's a little triangle next to Borders and Label. Anytime you see that, it means that this can be expanded. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And notice that we have Borders and we have Labels. Now next to Borders, we also have a little triangle. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now we have different kinds of borders. Now these light blue lines that you see on the map, these are actually county lines. These are second level administrative regions. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. And now I'm just left with the state boundary layers. Under the labels tab, if I click that triangle, you'll see that I have populated places. And if I don't want to see those, I go ahead and turn that off and I'll have just populated places. I'm going to go ahead and leave populated places off right now. Now the next option down here is called places. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you'll notice that some different dots will start appearing on the map. The most prominent one is this little airport symbol. If I hover my mouse over that, I can see that's the Baltimore Washington International Airport, commonly known in Maryland as BWI. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on Baltimore. And you'll notice as I zoom in, more and more places appear. If I hover my mouse over some of these, you can see, for example, the Walters Art Museum, First Mariner Arena, Top of the World, Bells Point Fun Festival, Baltimore Blast Training Facility. That sounds interesting. Clearly, I need to get to Baltimore more often because I really haven't been to most of these places. You can turn on photos, and the little photo icon turns on, and you can see what pictures people have uploaded to Google Earth. Here is a uh, company, uh, Printers. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And there's a picture of their building. This must be uh, some kind of famous uh, historical site. So you can spend hours and hours exploring all of these different uh, types of features. You can also turn on roads. So you can see the major interstates and highways. And there are quite a lot of, quite a lot of other things that you can do. Ocean related things, weather. There's a gallery. If I open up the gallery here, um, just look at all the different options um, that you can explore. Now, obviously, I'm not going to have time to look at all of these, but I encourage you to explore on your own and investigate all of the information that's available on Google Earth. Now, what I would like to do is to explore 3D a little bit more. So I'm going to turn off most of these um, things so that our map is not cluttered. And I'm just going to turn on 3D buildings. And then we're going to go ahead and zoom in to Baltimore. Baltimore, as do many major cities in America, as well as some of the really neat cities in Europe, have a lot of 3D buildings in Google Earth. Now I'm going to have to tilt the view so that you can see 3D. This is a chance for you to explore Baltimore or any other major city in, in America or in the world. Not every single one has 3D buildings, but many of them do. Now if I zoom in a little bit closer, I'm going to show you some neat uh, functionality here. So let's say, for example, um, you need to do some work in Baltimore, but it rains that day, and you decide that you really don't want to go outside because you don't want to get wet. So in Google Earth, you'll notice over here on the right-hand side, there is a drag to enter street view. So if I grab the little guy here, and I bring him out to the street, and plop him in. Now notice when I get close there, you can see these blue lines, which indicate that Street View is available. So now I'm in Street View. 
I can go ahead and rotate around and look at what's available. Which is pretty cool. Now these are uh, real photographs. Uh, it's difficult uh, to tell exactly what the date is. Uh, it says down here 8 2009. I'm not sure how reliable that is. We've been using these images to investigate Baltimore's vacant housing uh, database because we can actually verify that the house is actually vacant or not. So it looks like we've landed here in a relatively nice neighborhood. It looks very well kept, uh, has trees everywhere. We're not seeing any boarded up uh, buildings. Now notice at the top right, there's an option to go from the street view and then the ground level view. So if you go to ground level view, what happens is you go back to Google Earth, but now we're seeing the buildings. Now, if you'll notice, not all of Google Earth's buildings are the best. So we just saw this in Street View, and there were actually houses there, uh, but the trees blocked the image. These was called photo texture. So some of this looks a little bit funky. Now, at Washington College, uh, this is one of the reasons why we do not use this kind of 3D building, because it can look really bad. We actually make each of our buildings stick built. But you could walk through town, and I'm really picking a very, uh, very poor example uh, to show you this, but uh, you can also walk through buildings. Now we're out into the, uh, that must be the stadium. Maybe there's a game going on that we can check out. At any rate, uh, explore this on your own, hours of entertainment, uh, and it actually looks like you're doing something productive too. So I'm going to go ahead and exit ground level view. I'm going to turn off the 3D buildings, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and then navigate over to the harbor. Now, the inner harbor didn't always look like this. If you want to see what it might have looked like in the past, you can go to the historical imagery. So if we come up to the button here, it looks like a little time clock, and we select Show Historical Imagery. It brings up this slider dialog. We can actually go back in time. If you click the um, back button, we can just navigate back and see how this has changed over time. Now we're back to 2008, 2007. Baltimore is blessed with a uh, very uh, good archive of imagery. Uh, not every place on the planet you go to would have this many uh, aerial photography aerial photographs to pick from. If we go back far enough, we should end up with uh, black and white aerial imagery. Back to 1994. Then we could explore Baltimore and see what certain areas of the city look like approximately 17 years ago. Again, this is another tool that uh, could be used productively for work, but also you could have a lot of fun with. Now I'm going to go ahead and end my demonstration by showing you the flight simulator. Now, if you're going to go flying around, you might as well go someplace where there's something cool to fly around in. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Mount Everest. I'm going to click Search. We'll fly to Mount Everest. And if I use my center mouse button, I can tilt. You can see that we have serious terrain to fly around in here. Now in geoworkshops.org there is a link to some key keyboard shortcut commands to fly your plane. These are very useful to know. I'm actually not very good at it um, using the keyboard and flying at the same time. Maybe I need to get one of these wingman joysticks to really do it. But I'm going to quickly demonstrate uh, how fast you can crash and burn. So if I go to the Tools pull-down menu, I'm going to go ahead and enter the flight simulator. You can pick a couple different planes. I'm going to go ahead and fly with the F-16 because I'll be able to crash quicker. I'm going to go ahead and click Start My Flight. And then it looks like I have a little heads-up display. Now if you move your mouse around, you can fly up, you can fly down, you can turn, you can spin, I want to get your air sickness bag. 
let's see if we can land on the side of Mount Everest. Pull up, pull up, up. That's it. This is typically what happens to me when I use the flight simulator, but sometimes I can fly for more than 30 seconds. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tour and lecture on Google Earth and that you'll take some time to explore it. Uh, there's many applications for Google Earth. Google Earth really is the GIS. So it's a geographic data. It has information about that data, and it's a system. It's a very uh, basic GIS. Um, it's not quite as functional as ArcGIS. Uh, I would consider Google Earth to be a gateway drug to more advanced GIS software. So enjoy yourself and have a nice day.